Hey you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and today's video should be a fun one because I'm finally going to introduce you to a friend of mine by the name of Scarlett and I've known her for over a year and I find her very beautiful looking. Um, but before I get started, pay no attention to the scruffiness, I'm going to be Negan for Halloween. Go figure. Uh, also, you probably notice in a lot of my videos that I'm either wearing black or brown but I always have some form of red being represented somewhere on my body, either hanging off my belt or my ankle or wrist. And in fact, my camera has some red and even the tripod has red. There's always red. I like black and red. That being said, without further ado, let me introduce you to Scarlet, and you'll see why I'm talking about the black and red. There you go. Lactodectus variolus, the northern black widow. Black and red, right? Um, and as I said, I've known her for over a year. Uh, I had her when she was just a little baby, making webs in my hand. Uh, let's get this video started. So, naturally, to me, I find a black widow spider to be a thing of beauty. And when I say beautiful, I really mean I find these spiders beautiful looking. And let me show you why. I mean, come on, just look at that. That sleek midnight silhouette combined with those beautiful long slender legs complete with that hint of red in the form of an hourglass and of course I'm gonna love it right I mean the Honduran milk snakes are beautiful to me the the fire belly toads are gorgeous everything black and red even ladybugs I just find beautiful looking um, and of course iridescent green but that's another story one of the reasons these spiders have such a bad reputation is simply due to their physical appearance. I mean, you've got this black ball of daggers combined with the abosomatic coloration, right? The, the red contrasting with the black. And that red happens to take on the shape of an hourglass, which, like in the, the days of Blackbeard, simply tells you your time is limited. These spiders are wrapped in myth and legend, and their venomous bite is the stuff of nightmares. But does she really deserve such a bad reputation? No, she doesn't. And I'm going to tell you a little bit why. As the name Black Widow suggests, this spider is the most famous of all the femme fatales. Reputation states that her mate faces the great sleep after spending a romantic evening with his female counterpart. That's actually true for all sorts of spiders and invertebrates, but it's not a rule that's written in stone doesn't happen all the time. The male black widows actually have these chemoreceptors in their legs that they use for picking up pheromones indicating whether or not there's a female nearby. Those chemoreceptors also tell the males whether or not the female has eaten, if she's hungry. If she's hungry, he's not going to take her to dinner. In fact, he's going to turn around and book it. And he's like, I'm not messing with that. He'll just come back some other time. Now let's say the male comes back and he's starting to pick up chemicals indicating that she's not hungry, she's had food recently, he's going to try his luck. He's going to move on up into her web and start plucking and pulling on the cords of silk, pretty much like the strings of a guitar. He's going to serenade her, actually, and if all goes well, there will be a short dialogue, an exchange of vibration sense back and forth, and then it'll be time for romance. That male's serenade basically indicates to the female, hey, I'm not food, I'm a male of your species, and these are my intentions. All the while, he's also asking her, hey honey, what's your sign? Guess she'd be a Pisces. Guess they'd both be Pisces. Now, keep in mind that as in most invertebrates, the female is much larger than the, the male. And like I've said in previous videos, that is to accommodate for more eggs or more offspring within her body or larger offspring. You know, it's, it's an obvious thing. The males, they don't need to make eggs, and so they mature quicker and they don't get nearly as big. But he is very outmatched size and venom-wise because the males do not have the venom that the females have. If all goes well and she likes his song, well, they mate. If not, he better use those skedaddle eggs and get out of dodge or else 
He's not going to live to fight another day. Mating, however, is another feat altogether, and it's a touchy process, no pun intended. Uh, once the male matures, there's little ends on his pedipelps that swell up, and he uses those to collect his sperm and ultimately insert those into the reproductive openings of the females in order to fertilize her. While he's doing all that, he has to keep away from her fangs and make sure that he keeps her in the mood that entire time. That sounds fun. If all goes well, he fertilizes his mate and in turns and makes a hasty retreat and lives to mate another day. That's not because he's a bad partner, but mostly because the female definitely develops an appetite after mating. If it doesn't go well for him, dinner and a date. And actually, his sacrifice goes on to provide nutrition for the developing eggs within. So he's still providing for a future for his offspring. And the female, of course, benefits too, because she's going to spend most of her time developing those eggs, and then, of course, you know, in several days, making the egg sacs in the web, which are, you know, tannish brown and teardrop shaped. I'm sure you've seen similar cobweb spider egg sacs in the past. Mating for black widows takes place in the spring, and she'll lay those eggs in a few days, and they'll hatch in about 30 days. Female black widow spiders in the wild will live anywhere from, say, one to three years, whereas the males they only live about four months. Go figure. Not surprised. Now, black widows are pretty much categorized as cobweb spiders, and that's obviously due to the, the style of web they make. It looks haphazard and disorganized with a lot of vertical and horizontal struts just shooting in all directions. They usually make their webs close to the ground, and there's usually some sort of retreat or burrow nearby for obvious reasons. They'll still build their webs up in corners and wood piles, sometimes basements, you know, anywhere they generally want to. And their silk is pretty sticky, but it's also rather strong. It actually makes this little popping sound if you snap the fibers. And it's cool. They have unmistakable webs because they're generally filled with debris. And I'll try to show you that for a second. So I actually acquired Scarlet over a year ago one night when I was out harvesting branch hearts for firewood. I, I collected the wood and I was heading back to camp and I turned it over in my hand to discover a very young Scarlet in my hand. So I brought her back to my tent and, that sounds weird, to photograph her. And while I was doing so, she built this little web in my hand. I couldn't help myself. I fell in love with her after that. And, uh, you know, that was actually the perfect time to, to collect a black widow because it was well before she had a chance to mate and get fertilized. Last thing I wanted was to have two or three hundred baby black widows on my hands. So, worked out pretty good. Again, I'm not trying to anthropomorphize or anything like that, but it was as if she moved about her world with a lot of care and uncertainty. And when she came onto my hand, she almost did so apologetically. You know, when she'd go from finger to finger and stuff like that, she was cautious and aware of herself. And to be honest, you've got this little animal, this little being moving about being like, oops, trying to be all careful and non-imposive and I just, you know, I find it to be very cute. Not trying to impose human qualities onto an arachnid, but, you know, come on. It was cute. Like all immature spiders, she molted several times throughout the, the next few months, but then one night in early February, she molted into maturity. It was from that moment on that she took on an entirely new appearance and character. Her legs became about a third longer. Her abdomen took on the textbook widow shape, and what started out as orange spots and white stripes were reduced to a red stripe on the back and two little red triangles forming that famous hourglass. When I saw her new makeover, I knew immediately I was essentially looking at the embodiment 
of a true huntress, and I was not wrong. What once was a careful and hesitant spider that would throw blankets and blankets of silk at her prey before moving in was replaced by a deliberate, precise, and confident predator. Mad respect goes out to Scarlet. Of course, I handled her several times in that first month, but other than last night, I haven't handled her since. The reason I'm less inclined to handle her nowadays is because, like, whenever I'm, say, cleaning her enclosure or something, she demonstrates the fact that she is uncomfortable if I touch her. She doesn't really want that. She hasn't displayed any acts of aggression whatsoever, but she certainly displays the fact that she's shy and afraid, and I don't really want to scare the poor girl. You know, I mean, the last thing I want to do is unnecessarily frighten a creature just for my sake. Sometimes I do so, you know, to teach you guys, you know, about wildlife. But other than that, it's really not honorable to stress out a living creature. Especially one that can make me regret it. I know you want to know about their venomous bite and cantankerous attitude. So I'll talk a little bit about that right now. <laughs> Obviously, as I said, these spiders are not aggressive whatsoever. I mean, I've put my hands in their webs so many times, and you know what they do. They generally dart off in the opposite direction and scurry into their retreats, not to be seen for an hour. In rare cases, they might actually stick around in their web and be like, okay, you're not food. Just stay over there and I'll go about my business. Doesn't sound aggressive to me. Of course, there are always exceptions to the rule. I remember this one night I was filming a spider by my tent and there happened to have been a black widow right there. And I was standing in her web without knowing it. I looked down and she kept on darting out towards my foot. Uh, to investigate what was going on, and I found that very strange spider behavior. Clearly, she knew I was not an insect, but she was coming out right onto my sandal. And uh, sure enough, after a few seconds, she darted off into her burrow. These spiders, like most animals on our planet, really just want to avoid conflict. You know, the last thing they really want to do is risk injury and put themselves in a stressful situation that could actually end in injury or death. Her venom is a precious commodity. It's intended for securing food for her future, for survival. It's not made for establishing real estate. Think about that. She has this powerful latrotoxin, which is what you call black widow venom. It's a neurotoxin that attacks the nervous system of their prey, but it can do the same thing to human beings. It attacks the nerves, causing massive transmitter release and acetylcholine release throughout the system and more. Her venomous bite will basically tell your brain that you are in pain, lots of pain. I mean, you'll have general muscle spasms and cramps throughout the body, your abdominal muscles will really cramp up and spasm to the point where they could be rather rigid. You almost always have lower back pain that is pretty significant, accompanied by a pretty nasty headache that just doesn't go away. Um, you know, you can be nauseous. Sometimes you end up vomiting. There will be a lot of sweating in most cases, which is pretty interesting because you might be sweating a lot in, say, your leg, for a couple hours, and then it stops and it goes to the other leg for a couple hours. And this is really interesting. Uh, some people have a little bit of trouble breathing, you know, shallow breaths, other compromised motor skills and neurological activity. Most of the time, it's just, you know, back pain and headaches for, you know, a few days to a week. Some unlucky souls out there might be in pain, you know, locally for weeks or even months. And in rare cases, you end up in the hospital with a whole arsenal of symptoms. 
There's just going to be a lot of things to happen, but it's very rare that her bite proves to be fatal. Um, in fact, I believe the last person that died from a Black Widow bite was in 1980, 1983. So, you know, you stand a good chance, but you also stand a good chance of winding up in the hospital. I don't want to get bit by one of these spiders, but I know the odds are in my favor of a positive outcome. Of course, their venom is intended for taking out their prey, which usually consists of invertebrates, such as, you know, insects, arachnids, and they really like June bugs and, and large beetles. But they'll sometimes feed on, you know, mice, lizards, and even small snakes. It's, it's not unheard of, and every once in a while you'll find one in one of their webs with the spider feeding away. All that being said, a black widow spider would rather turn and flee for her life than to turn around, rear up, and throw down. They're not aggressive. They don't want to fight. They don't want to waste that venom. They would rather just keep to themselves and avoid you and anything that's not food. Makes sense. You know, I have to apologize. I've picked the hardest week for filming this video. One second, it's totally sunny. The next second, the windows are being pelted with rain, and then it goes back to sunny. Then it gets really windy. This is very difficult, especially when I'm not some production company. I'm just me. She's not the first Black Widow I've held. Uh, down in North Carolina one night, there was a Black Widow walking up my leg. And, you know, I've got furry legs. And the spider was having trouble negotiating that forest. So I used my hand to you know, coax the spider out and place it in the bush. When asked to describe what it's like to hold a black widow, I guess I'd have to say that they're very delicate, fragile, and deliberate about their movements. But it's also kind of like holding a loaded gun with no safety. Except in this case, the safety would be to show her respect and to be gentle with her. Most women are like that, actually. There's at least 32 species of black widow worldwide. You've got your famous redbacks of Australia. There's actually a species of black widow that is mostly red. Uh, the abdomen's still black, but it's got these red spots on it, and some of them actually look like hearts. It's pretty cool looking. In the United States, you've got three species. You've got the western black widows, you've got your southern black widow, and of course you've got your northern black widows. Sometimes the northern and southern species overlap in their territories and an easy way to tell the difference is looking at the southern black widow, she's predominantly black, a jet black, but she's got that perfectly formed hourglass you know, pair of triangles on her underside, whereas the northern black widow often has a red stripe going along her back, similar to the red backs, and that hourglass shape isn't quite as complete as it is in the southern widow species. I hope you guys liked this video. I mean, I hope you give these black widows a chance and saw that it's not an aggressive species. I mean, every time I touch Scarlet, she's, like I said, she's shy and almost apologetic. And it makes me feel bad. I don't want to stress her out. They can choose whether or not to envenomate you. They're very reluctant to bite in the first place. You've got to really convince them to deliver a bite. And then it might be a dry bite. If you do get bit, you do get envenomated, it is so unlikely that you will die from it. You know, these bites are pretty much not fatal. It could be in extreme cases. You could suffer from, you know, paralysis of the diaphragm. That sounds fun and uh, you know, seizures and stuff. But most, most of the time, it's just a, a whole lot of pain and you know, muscle cramps. Unlikely though. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato. Say bye, Scarlet. I can't believe I just said that. Signing out.